Well, hello there, watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. So, time to see then what's making the headlines with the political editors of The Daily Mirror and The Sun, Pippa Crira and Harry Cole. Great to see both of you staying with us until just before midnight. So, to the front pages then. Let's start with the Metro, which describes today's bizarre speech by the Prime Minister to business leaders as a Peppa Pig's ear in light of the references he made to the children's TV character. The Guardian understands a number of Conservative MPs are losing confidence in Boris Johnson. While the Daily Star dubs it the PM's oddest speech yet. According to The Telegraph, the Brexit Minister, Lord Frost, believes the government must cut taxes or else run the risk that leaving the EU could fail. The I carries new government advice to get a COVID test before going Christmas shopping. The Financial Times leads with Joe Biden's decision to renominate Jerome Powell to lead the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, a controversial decision as Powell was originally chosen by Donald Trump. And The Sun criticises the decision by the Brit Awards to drop specific male and female categories and go gender neutral. So let's bring in Pippa Crera and Harry Cole. Welcome to both of you. Um, what did we learn about Peppa Pig today, I suppose, is the question, leading a number of the newspapers, Harry? Yes. Bizarrely, this isn't the first day that Peppa Pig has massively derailed British politics. I'm old oh. enough to remember uh, 2010 and the 2010 general election campaign. Peppa Pig was meant to meet Gordon Brown and the, uh, the Tories complained that it was too political uh, and Peppa Pig should stay out of politics. Um, and now today we had this it was a bizarre spectacle of the Prime Minister, who it turns out had taken his young son to Peppa Pig World over the weekend, photographed as at one point sitting in a teacup, as far as I can tell, um, had uh, tried to, he was using his, sort of, you know, his usual sort of Johnson um, tactics in, a, in quite a dry speech about business and taxation, <laughs> trying to butter up um, businesses. But telling this great story about how the world should be a little bit more like Peppa Pig. And he slightly botched it. He's not exactly firing on all cylinders at the moment. Um, people suggest he's been labouring with the, uh, the sort of dreaded lurgy that's been doing the rounds, the cold, the cold that's not COVID that he can't seem to shake. And I think if he'd had, if he'd been on normal form for the last, you know, couple of weeks and hadn't been bogged down in sleaze uh, allegations, in social care, the sort of half-cocked um, trains announcement last week, I think he probably would have got away with it. But it, it felt to me it's a sort of physical embodiment of, of all the sort of government's midterm blues, all sort of rammed into one slightly bizarre speech. Um, but he's been out about tonight um, at various dinners, and uh, my spies tell me he's been doubling down on um, on his claim that we should all be a little bit a little bit more like Peppa Pig World, where everyone's happy and the uh, and the tiny trains run on time. It was um, it was a strange day. <laughs> a strange day. I mean, you know, some might say I know he's had a holiday, and that was controversial. Um, but it's been a busy time, hasn't it, for a prime minister who does have a, a young child, a baby on the way, brain fog with said cold. Uh, I can sympathise with that. I have to say, um, you know, everybody runs out of steam eventually at this time of year. Is that is that excusable or losing your place or your page or whatever it was in the speech today with the multiple forgive me's? Um, that's all quite naturally done, isn't it? I think it's about prioritising those, isn't it? And I think for the Prime Minister, who's had actually quite a testy relationship with big business for a Conservative, to turn up at the CBI conference and make an in-person speech to them um, and an array of, of lum business luminaries in the audience who were sitting there waiting to see whether he was going to try and build bridges with them, uh, not just because of some of his previous comments about how he regards business, but also uh, in sort of post-Brexit world, and to come up with a speech which is, is really not very serious, littered with the normal Johnsonian metaphors, but they didn't land this time. Um, I think really a lot of uh, business people that we spoke to up there after the speech felt that it just wasn't serious and actually it was a bit disrespectful um, of, of business. It didn't land well with them. It also didn't land well with Conservative MPs. You showed the Guardian front page there, but every paper has been covering it. The sort of the rumblings we've had from the backbenchers about how this speech um, really just looked sort of shambolic. Um, it was the latest in a series of um, bad front pages for the Prime Minister. In recent weeks, we've had the obviously the Tory sleaze row, which he kicked off with his, his mishandling of the Owen Paterson affair. 
swiftly followed by last week's um, rows over rail and whether investment in the north had been all the, uh, uh, and infrastructure in the north had been oversold and they were under delivering. And then obviously tonight, we're, um, as we talk, the MPs have just voted on social care plans, which many of his own backbenchers feel as downgrading of promises. Um, it kind of feels like number 10 isn't handling things very well at the moment. Uh, we've had a lot, we'll see a lot of that in all the papers tomorrow. Um, ultimately, the buck stops with the Prime Minister, and maybe he should prioritise that CBI speech and not try to rush around to all these other events tonight, um, shaking hands with donors and so on. Yes, I mean, I suppose politics needs money, doesn't it, if that's an excuse for that. Uh, but the question is, if you look at that Guardian, can you stop the rot, effectively? Can you draw a halt to this? And does he need some more grown-ups with him in Downing Street? Is he missing the likes of Edward Lister? The, the suggestion always was that he would be, you know, the chairman to the chief executive or, or whatever that role would be, where, you know, he's going to be nurtured by people. Does he need some extras in there, Harry? Yeah, I think we are in slight... I mean, it, it was a... It, He's had a bad week. He's had a bad, a bad couple of weeks. He's, had a, he's a bad, had a bad day. I do think there is a slight problem, though, of people and the same old people who always, has always hated this prime minister, even before he was prime minister, um, slightly suffering from sort of Boris derangement <coughs> syndrome, who are now saying, you know, oh, my God, here's our chance. Finally, the whole world is going to come around to our way of thinking and we're going to jump up and down and say, we told you so. The guy's a clown. Look, weren't we proved right? And I just think, you know, level headed level heads are needed a little bit. There is clearly some problems within within number ten, number eleven. Uh, the wider cabinet feel that they're not being listened to. Their advice is it sort of, sort of falls at the wayside. There was some um, rather unedifying scrapping tonight between um, where we've sort of got right into the criminology of what is a Downing Street source. Is it someone from number ten? Or is it someone from number eleven? There's some sort of uh, barbs being traded. Uh, about the cabinet needing to step in to do more with the prime minister. However, I would just step back and think, actually, you know, six weeks ago, people were saying he's going to rule for seven years. You know, he's he's not going anywhere. He's at the top of his game, and you're just saying in the ebb and flow of politics, the you know, don't be too quick to you know to base on on, on the back of one week this idea that the, this prime minister doesn't have a a connection to to voters in a way that the Tory party have not had for a very long time. And, you know, take The Guardian there. The headline, I'd argue, is a little overwritten. Um, they've got they've managed to find three anonymous backbench Tory MPs who don't like Boris Johnson. And frankly, give me five minutes, I'll get them on the show if you want. Yeah, I mean, it, it is The Guardian on a Tory, of course, isn't it? Um, but let's go to your paper, front page of The, the Mirror, as you suggested uh, in the last uh, half hour or so, the vote on social care. And, you you know, it's, it's really not surprising why governments don't tackle social care. You know, it, it's burnt a few, hasn't it, along the way, Pippa? Yes, and we've had successive governments making promises that haven't then uh, been delivered. And, you know, my personal view is that this government deserves some credit for at least putting the issue on the table. However, that doesn't mean you can gloss over the detail of how it's been handled and what's, what's on offer. And Sir Andrew Dilnett, who, of course, was the architect of the original social care plans that's got so far with David Cameron, but not actually into legislation, has suggested that what is now being suggested by the government, while better than the situation now, and I think it's right that we, that we, um, that we note that, is not as good as, um, as what was promised by the Prime Minister. And this is a bit of a pattern, really, with Boris Johnson, is that this feeling that he over-promises and under-delivers. You know, he could have actually had a great success with some of his real announcements last week had he not promised so much and tied it all up to this levelling up agenda. Um, that he, that he uh, it was sort of a core pledge at the, at the 2019 election. This week again, I mean, the changes are quite dramatic. It's the first time they've had a cap on care costs. Um, right, but instead, because he's promised that nobody's ever going to have to sell their house and because he suggested that, um, you know, the, that uh, poorer homeowners were going to be better supported than it actually, it actually turns out that they will be. Um, and because inevitably, because of the price of properties, lots of those people that have been worst affected by the changes in the cap are in the north of England. It looks like he's actually 
under delivering again. So, you know, it's as much a problem with the messaging and the handling of how they sell their policies, not just to their ventures, but also to the public, um, as it is about the policies themselves. And, you know, it's not just one day of bad headlines, it's several weeks, and it's starting to have an impact on the polls. Where I agree with Harry is that, you know, that in itself does not bring down a government. And Boris Johnson is a very long way from, um, you know, being ousted by his Tory about ventures, for example. I mean, and some chatter about that, but I don't think anyone really takes that seriously. Uh, you know, he is a politician that has an incredible ability to to bounce back. He's done it before. Um, but it just does feel now that he's in a position not only where, um, you know, he's, he's got all these problems, many of which are of his own making. We lurch from one to the next to the next, but also the Labour Party is starting to capitalise on them. Okay. One of the criticisms of them has always been that they hadn't. OK, sorry to rush you. Um, I did want to find out who the... Uh... The most popular Tory was in terms of the bidding. Uh, your front page, champagne drinking Tories rush back from millionaire donors party to vote in favour of making poorer pensioners pay more for social care. Top billing was what, Harry, very quickly? Rishi Sunak. Rishi an, Sunak. Hour of there we with, an hour of cricket with an hour of cricket with Rishi Sunak for 35,000 quid. Or a more a bargain night out of karaoke with Liz Truss. For 22,000. I'm getting live updates of the auction. It's happening yeah. now. <laughs> well, you can, keep, you can keep us posted as the evening progresses. <laughs> uh, plenty more still to come in the next part of our programme. Uh, the very latest on the Brit Awards dropping male and female categories to go gender neutral. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, Pippa Carrera and Harry Cole from The Mirror and The Sun. Uh, Pippa, let's go to the Daily Telegraph now, shall we? And this is uh, Lord Frost, he of Brexit fame, obviously, suggesting that with Brexit must come other things like cutting taxes so we don't follow the European model. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? On the day that the Prime Minister gave his big speech to business, it's actually, it's actually Lord Frost that makes the front page of The Telegraph this the Tory sort of in-house in paper, as it were. Um, and it's interesting that he felt bold enough or feels bold enough to speak out on government policy like tax, when really this is the remit of the Chancellor or the Prime Minister. He was, of course, one of the few cabinet ministers that spoke out in cabinet um, against national insurance rises that were announced recently. Um, his warning is that Brexit might fail if the government doesn't um, decide to cut taxes and reduce regulations for business, that business isn't just a, a cash cow um, uh, in order to support the public sector. And he's warning, of course, not to, uh, unsurprisingly probably, to not to follow the European social model. Though it, it is worth noting that um, there are countries with a higher tax take than the UK, which also have higher GDP per capita. There's a long list of them, including Germany and, uh, you know, Belgium, the Netherlands, Finland, Austria could go on. So, you know, it's not as simple as saying that there's one European social model that, uh, that fits all. And a quick look at the front of The Sun, Harry, your paper, uh, mm. which pits two of the UK's biggest stars head to head um, because the Brits have gone gender neutral. Yeah, another one of these classic ones of, uh, uh, of, of wokery that um, people will get very angry about. Um, but actually, I think we'll probably end up backfiring because at the moment mm. there are separate categories for men and women at the Brit Awards. You know, now, in pitting artists, male and female artists, against each other, statistically speaking, fewer women artists are going to get are going to get awards. So it's sort of it feels like a one of those great things that's step, dressed up as a great forward step in progress, and actually in reality is but a bit of a step backwards for, um, for, for in a lot of ways. So I imagine it's a, a talker, and I wonder how long before we hear from new culture sector on this one. We were trying to coax her into saying something about it earlier, but I don't suppose it'd be long. You'll have to keep trying, won't you? Harry, Pippa, thank you very much indeed.